welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio is my branding coach, Everaldo Gallimore, Creative Director and Branding Coach with Gallimore Design. Everaldo, big hug, <laughs> big hug, and don't mess up the mic. Okay, big hug. Thanks for joining well. me today. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm and excited I'm, that you're here too. I'm finally uh, on the seat. On the and, seat, uh, yeah. Having this talk, this is great. Yeah, this is great. yeah. Oh. So, other folks don't know about what you do, mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily know your significant story. But I'm going to pull out a few from you because when we first met, I had a horrible website. I mean, absolutely horrible. And you did not hesitate to tell me that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Correct? Right, yes. Correct, yeah. Yes. Um, right. And we met because we were both at an event, mm -hmm. a George Frazier event, mm -hmm. and you were in front of me in the line, and you were in the way between me and the turkey. And I was forced to talk to you because I wanted you to speed up in the line. Do you remember that? Well, I remember something a, a little different. Okay, what do you um, remember? Well, <laughs> yes, I do remember I was in the line in front of you. I don't know if uh, if um, you asked me a question. Maybe you asked me to move up on the okay, line. Okay, probably. So, I am so, directed. So yes. maybe it was that you were hungry <laughs> and I was in your way. But um, I remember ta uh, talking to you about what you do and mm -hmm. what was your business, and then I launched into a story about what I did. So right. that's what it was. He did. So he did. you found out very quickly that I was good at stories. So you are great at stories. Okay. And one of my favorite stories is why you kind of are a collector, a collector of things, a collector of patterns. Share that story again. Okay, well, being a collector of patterns really was something I picked up from my mother because she was a designer and she was a, a, a fashion designer and fashion a seamstress. Mm -hmm. And she collected a lot of patterns and a lot of fabrics and a lot of buttons. And this was something I picked up from her because it seemed like a lot going on and she was being creative. Mm -hmm. So it was experiencing her alchemy, as you would, of creating something and fashion for people. And, she would model things for me and for her sister, my aunts and mm -hmm. her friends. Mm -hmm. And it was always something going on with that. I was fascinated by the conversations and the, the flamboyant um, uh, way she would bring people into uh, fashion and, mm -hmm. and she enjoyed it. So mm -hmm. I used to pick through her boxes of buttons. Ah, you pick through the boxes, boxes of, of buttons. buttons. Okay, because uh, that's almost like yeah, a, right. a tongue twister. Right. And and what what fascinated you about the buttons? Why buttons? The variety, the colors, variety, the, the sizes, colors. just variety, mm -hmm. and the fact that there's so much variety in things. Mm -hmm. um, just before that, I also remember my uncles were each one of my four uncles were in a different branch of service, mm -hmm. which I thought was fascinating. One was in the Navy, mm -hmm. one was in the Army, the Air Force, and the Marines. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. And they used to bring, maybe, I don't know if my mother requested or she told them, oh, you know, Everaldo loves uh, uh, buttons and, and lapel buttons. So they all would come by and they would bring me a different medal, mm -hmm. a different pin, or uh, um, a military patch. Mm -hmm. So I started collecting all these different military patches and buttons. I bet you didn't know that. I knew some of that. Oh, okay, okay. So today, bringing us kind of fast forward, mm -hmm. you're a creative director and branding coach. Yes. How does that story about buttons and collecting and patterns and shapes and sizes relate Good. Hey, hey, hey. to what you do? Here's what, how it relates. Okay. I learned that symbols communicate things. Hmm. And in this, in this way, um, these symbols were military symbols and they were communicating ranks and uh, merits. And th these are the stories I would get from my uh, mm -hmm. uncles because I would ask them, why is this star, why is this pen, and what is this for? And they would tell me, well, this is, I got this when I performed this deed and all the stories behind it. But I learned that, that there were different the difference in a design, a color, a shape, and 
a viewpoint that had levels, symbols, le levels of, uh, would you say, levels of, um, of uh, achievement. And that was where I started understanding the idea of design and communication. Okay. Through and symbols. I understand that when you were younger, you were shy and you often drew. Yes. And yes. how did that connect to what you do today? I think it's because, again, going back to my mother, she was drawing patterns. Mm -hmm. She had the pens and the pen paper, and she would be doodling stuff, and I would be either playing with my toys, and she was quietly in the corner drawing something, and I wanted to know what she was doing. Mm -hmm. So I would come stand next to her. I think somewhere my mother realized that this boy is either going to be all in my things, <laughs> or I better give him something to work with. Okay. So she watched me kind of watch her, and oh, uh, here I guess you remember this story. She left her patterns out with her books. She might probably went off somewhere mm -hmm. a minute, and I started drawing all over her things. And then she realized that, okay, you need your own book, right. you need your coloring book, your own tools, and you could draw over there in a the corner, and that way you don't have to compete with my fashion work. Uh -huh. That's how that. Uh -huh. That's Did you started. ever end up designing dresses and things like that? Only once, mm -hmm. and that was in high school. A, a friend of mine asked me to design a dress for her. I don't even know where that came from. The conversation. Maybe I told her, you know, about my mother being. A, mm -hmm. So she asked me. She said, "Can you?" And she was in fashion, so mm -hmm. she was interested in what my ideas were. And mm -hmm. I designed a dress for her. And I, I can't even tell you if it was a. Uh, listen. To this day, I'm not in FIT or nobody <laughs> heralded, so I don't know how that worked out. But she, she had it made, mm -hmm. and I saw the dress in a fashion show, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. you know, and everybody else liked it. And I think I still have that drawing. As a matter of fact. Well, you're going to have to pull it out. <laughs> so you help people communicate their ideas, mm -hmm. and you did that fairly early on, even though you didn't specifically go to college or get a master's in art. Yes. How did you make that transition from something that you loved um, to going out in the world and getting paid for being a graphic designer? Well, it was through passion mm -hmm. and through um, passion and having support. Friends mm -hmm. that are, who were also artists, we were all, all encouraging each other. And through when you have a group of friends and family supporting your talent and your efforts, it kind of pushes you, pushes you on. And I had the confidence to build a portfolio mm -hmm. after, after school, after art and design. Um, and going to art and design, I was working through, um, uh, n not exactly in design itself, but I had a, fl a, flor uh, a job at a florist, uh, floral shop. Oh, and of course, that involves some creativity. I found mm -hmm. out that the uh, owner of the florist, he was he was employing kids from art and design because they had insight and eyes for right. uh, beauty, and that was his. So, the, the floral shop wasn't far from school. After school, I would go work for him, mm -hmm. and um, I would start taking pictures of my designs and uh, ideas and putting them in, in a book, and that was added to my first portfolio. Mm -hmm. And there were other things. So after that, um, upon graduation, I went out to look for my, I had a portfolio of graphic design from uh, classes, and I went out to look for my first job. I didn't have any problem getting, getting the first interview I was hired. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, I asked, once I had the job for a few months, I asked, well, why did you hire me? So, you know, my first interview, they said, if you have to ask us and you don't know, you better find out. Ooh. Ooh. And from there, I went to School of Visual Arts mm -hmm. to find out. Okay. <laughs> now, you've had some very impressive mm -hmm. clients, mm -hmm. including Motown. Yes. Um, yes give was. us a quick story about, um, about this, some of those clients. I was getting interested in, uh, okay, well, Motown was, again, through friends of connection. You know, when you're, when you're up and coming artists, and a lot of teenagers will tell you this, you know a lot of people. Right. They do know, it is a community. It's like any entrepreneur, it's like any other business, you have to build, a, build in a community from people who know you. Right, And right. can tell your story. Right. So, uh, somehow, um, 
friend of mine told me there was an art director, uh, no, a creative director looking for a designer to, to train to be an art director in the music industry. And I had friends of mine who were in the music industry, and that's probably how we found out about that. And um, I went to interview uh, with him. I showed him my portfolio. Again, I can't tell you what was in the portfolio, but he said, I'll, can you do three album covers for us? Okay. As what were a, those three album, album covers? Co one, now, this company, another thing about branding, this company was taking over, um, a, a com company was taking over Chess Records. Mm -hmm. Chess Records was a brand that had been out for many years, and they, they merged with Platinum. That combined uh, merger was what kind of, re well, the merger re made them realize they had to change their brand. Sure. So they wanted somebody who can take that brand and meld it with what was of the past and what were they were trying to do for the future. Mm -hmm. So they said, can you come up with an idea or a series of ideas so you could repackage us? And they said, well, you could do that by designing these three albums. And they, they were artists like the Flamingos, the Moonglows, and um, Dale and Hawkins, which I didn't know anything about. Okay. I had to quickly pick up their bio, get information on them, never talk to them, but look up some history. From that history, I was able to design three covers. Those three covers really sold collectors who knew about these artists on who they were but also they were selling the new company that was rebranding them. They, they said it went off with a hitch. They re, their their uh, president, the creative director, everybody liked it. And they really knew that this was somebody that knew how to bring a brand, a fresh brand to um, classic ideas. Mm -hmm. And words are very important when it comes to branding. As, sure. as, as, um, you know. So the whole idea of classic bringing a classic uh, feeling to a new brand and kind of melding the two, the old with the new, is what mm -hmm. they really wanted. We hit that. Mm -hmm. And from there, um, oh, a one, that's one of my first awards mm -hmm. was for that series uh, mm -hmm. of, um, of album covers. And from there, it was on to the next and on to the on next. On to the next. next. So you had the pleasure of having many years of being in this industry. Um, the industry is changing. Yep. What words of advice do you have for graphic artists that are up and coming? Maybe they're 16, 18, 20. Know your tools. Mm -hmm. Because if they're, if, they're, um, if they're passionate about their design, and there's, when it comes to graphics, there's no good or bad designers. It's only unskilled. So the, the more you know your tools, the more skilled you are with those tools, your creativity and your passion will come out through, mm. through that. So it's like telling someone just going back to school and stay always learning, keep moving ahead, and um, and what is it? There's a uh, saying of stay frosty. Mm -hmm. Just stay happy. Stay and frosty. Stay, and, yeah, <laughs> that's what we used to say to each other in the music. Oh, class. okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that uh, don't get don't get in a rut. Don't 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 feel that you're not going to move ahead. Stay positive and and stay uh, fluid, get mm -hmm. out get out and move around and socialize. Makes okay. sense. Right. Everaldo, it's been fun having you in the seat. Yeah. Um, yeah does it feel like the hot seat no. or the director's seat? Uh, well, this is the director's chair, but this is a hot seat <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> a hot enough. director's chair. That's what it Fair enough. You know, it, I, I really enjoy working with you. You've really made a difference in my business. And I'd love for folks to know how they can get in touch with you. Okay, well, you can get in touch with me by contacting me through web uh, or email at everaldogallimore.com or uh, email at evgal at gallimoredesign.com. Terrific, terrific. Branding, graphic design, mm -hmm. and helping people get clear on their message. Yes. I love what you do. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. And I really appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay, good. So, folks, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. My guest today was Everaldo Gallimore of Gallimore Design, branding coach and creative director. Join us in our next episode as we continue to hear from significant entrepreneurs and their significant stories.